What's up, guys? Welcome back to another daily Bible reading snapshot. Today in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26 and 27, one big principle that we can take away from Deuteronomy 26 is that when we give to God, we should give the first and we should give the best of what we have to God. Whether that's with our money gifts that we give to God, or whether that's with our time or our service, or even every morning when we wake up and hopefully give ourselves to the word and to prayer, give the best to God. And the reason for that, God gives here in verse 9 of Deuteronomy 26, he says, And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Okay, God is the one who's given us all good things. We need to make sure that when we give to God, that we're giving him the best because he gave it in the first place. Okay, God does not deserve second best in our life. He does not deserve um, the, the leftovers. And sometimes when we think about serving God or giving to God, what we think of is like, well, okay, I'll give God whatever I have left over. That's not how God wants us to think about it. Because all your time, all your effort, all your money, all your stuff, all your abilities, all of it was given by God, okay? So we need to treat God like the God he is and give him our best. So Deuteronomy 26 should teach us that. Also in Deuteronomy 27, we're going to find out these curses on this on this mountain called Ebal. So they're about to enter the land, remember? They're not in the land yet. On the other side of the Jordan, they're on this mountain, and there's all these curses. Now, it's interesting. He gets all the people together, and they're supposed to say amen to this or to agree to this. So when it says, Cursed be anyone who dishonors his father or mother, all the people said amen, which means I agree with that. That's what amen means. It's not a mystical, magical word. All it means is yes, or I agree, or totally, thumbs up, absolutely. It's, a, it's an affirmation. So when we see this, we see that these people of Israel are condemning themselves if they don't obey God's rules. So all these rules that are listed here, they say, yes, I totally agree to that. So when God punishes people for their sin, he can remind them, hey, remember, you agreed to this. Th like this was on our terms. You, you remember when we talked about this on Mount Ebal. And obviously there's plenty of generations of Israelites who sinned, who did not live at this time when these curses were happening, but it was in the law. They were supposed to affirm this and say, yes, amen, I agree to these rules. Because God is not a, a mean or unjust God. He's gracious to give them these rules. So that's Deuteronomy 26 and 27. Um, some helpful insights, hopefully, that you can take away, um, especially about giving the first to God from Deuteronomy 26. So let's look at Mark, Mark chapter 15. I already turned there. Maybe you guys, I don't know if you follow along with your Bibles when we do these videos, but make sure that if you don't follow along, make sure that you read the whole thing every day. So Mark 15, just a little short section here, not even the whole chapter, just to verse 26. We see that Jesus interacts with a guy named Pilate, Pontius Pilate. He was a Roman governor. He was somebody in charge of many, many people. He was in charge of many men and many legions of, of the army and stuff. And here it says he's in charge of this trial because the Jews could not put um, their own citizens to death because Rome was there. They were the the overlords in the area. Um, the Jews had to submit to them. So they could not put Jesus to death. They had to go through the Romans. Pilate's an interesting figure because it seems like he's kind of a good guy, but then he turns out to be kind of a bad guy because he has... He's a little bit of a per, he's a little bit of a coward is what people have known him as because he doesn't stand up for Jesus here. He has the opportunity to, but he doesn't do it. So it says that as this trial happens, Pilate notices that the Jews are jealous of Jesus. It says that Pilate notices that about it, and he tries to get Jesus off and let him go free, but the Jews are adamant. No, you got to crucify this guy. So he says, okay, fine. He says in verse fifteen. He did it to satisfy the people. Verse, uh, yeah, verse 15 says he did this um, so that the people uh, would just be satisfied, the crowd satisfied. So he had Jesus scourged or whipped and then led to be crucified. So this is some serious stuff here. Jesus is taking punishment. You're going to read that today. Jesus is taking punishment from the Romans, but I, what I want you to realize ultimately is he's taking punishment from God. And he's not just dying in isolation out on his own and God's just putting him to death instantly. This is a long, drawn-out process that is embarrassing. It's shameful. It's made for him to look guilty. And he doesn't even fight back. And the reason for that is he is bearing the guilt, the shame, and the punishment of the sins of his people. He's bearing your guilt and your shame and my guilt and my shame. When he goes to the cross and is mistreated, he is standing in for me. 
He's standing in for you if you trust him. And I just want you to think about that today. As you read this, he's standing in for me. This should have been me. But instead, Jesus took the punishment for us. And I think that should change the way you treat this entire day. It's the way you should entreat. It should change the way you treat God in prayer. That this is Jesus who stood in my place. I need to worship him. I need to give my whole life to him, even today. So hopefully that's an encouragement for you to live for Jesus today as you recognize what he did for you in his word. So let us come back tomorrow with eyes that are excited to read God's word and make sure you read God's word today and make sure you live for him also. So that's the most important thing. So we'll see you back tomorrow for another daily Bible reading snapshot.